Hello and welcome to the Squeaky Bum Time Podcast with Michael and Ron. It is Tuesday, September 14th. In this episode, Cristiano Cristiano Ronaldo delivers. City and Chelsea cruise. Liverpool lose a key player. But first, Mike, we made it. We did it. Episodes of the Squeaky Bum Time Podcast. I can't believe it. Uh, I'm wearing a helmet in honor so that I don't have to do my World War II reference. I am the reference. Um, <laughs> I'm ready for the Wehrmacht to roll. I'm ready for to be in the trenches against uh, any sort of cannon fire. I'm ready to talk about the Crimean War or the you know the Great Cavalry ca- uh, Charge of 1890. Whatever you got, Napoleon, dynamite or otherwise, uh, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how we've gotten to 100 episodes. I was looking um, at my Facebook memories, and the it's been a year. It's been literally 300, just under 365 days. The day that episode 99 came out was the first anniversary of our first episode. So we it, did 99 episodes in a year, and it was a combination of us finding our way, finding our voice, and a bunch of stupid World War II jokes that honestly go much deeper than most people appreciate and realize. Go back and listen to some of the older episodes because there's some genuine gold dropped in there. Oh, um, yeah, but yeah. I'm excited. I, I, I'm I'm happy uh, that w- that we've gotten this far. I love doing it with you. Um, it's it's crazy. We were talking about it after we did 99 the other day, and like how many there's there's like two million podcasts out there, right? Like how many ep- of those get to a hundred episodes? How many of them are in the triple digit club? I think we're Not I think lot. we're 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 in rarefied air. Like I think we if are. we hang on, someone will find us. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think here's a perfect example, right? Like I think two weeks ago, I put a lot of effort into really trying to grow the pod and got us to like, you know, a thirty percent higher than I than we normally go. I have done nothing for two weeks yeah. and we're higher than that. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's really about raising value, right? And the our, the people don't want to hear about us talk about analytics, but you know, it's it's a testament to to you and me kind of sitting here bullshit and putting the work in and yeah. having a fun. Move. But at the same time, it is uh, we've we've been pushed to kick on by our friends in in our Squeaky Bum Time Facebook group, which if you haven't already, you should join and be a part of that. Um, it's people on social media chatting with us, other folks in the the Chops, soccer football Chops community Dave, on Twitter, Dave and the team, pushing. and of course, of course, Dave, Dave and Chris at, at Chops have been you know some of our biggest supporters and fans since we joined and, with them. And I'll so. give one other shout out. Hey. Fan Hub has been there. They're posting us in their app. They're growing with us. That's right. You know, we we, yep. we shared a couple of. I shared my lineup again. So Fan Hub, anywhere where we're syndicating and trying to push out, and on Twitter, all the places for any. However, you found us, we're so happy to be here. Shout oh, out to you. Angela. Shout out to my sister Simone who listens to these. Shout <laughs> out to uh, all the all the crew that that show up for these. And you know, I know there's a silent majority out there uh, that listen. Some of you don't know anything about football, but hopefully um, you listen because you want to be with us. Uh, and 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 to my friend Fred Sarasso, who doesn't like you, Mike, he's never met you. Fuck you, Fred. Dude, I don't like me. Yeah. So, and uh, I have to take my helmet <laughs> off. It's 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 too heavy for me. Take it off. Take oh. it off. Um, but, but no, uh, I mean, you know, oh, wait, 100 I got episodes a little bit ago. Of an haircut. Little. Jesus Christ. Little, uh, 100 episodes ago, we sat here little, and we oh, wait were just bullshitting. Wait a oh, minute. Oh, my God. Am I ready? <laughs> <laughs> und, Sorry, to my und, Jewish friends, I love you. We und, don't we don't take uh, the Nazis lightly. They just happen to be, you know, they are just, the butt of most of the World War II jokes. Though we make fun of yeah. them because we beat them. Thank God the helmet's off. Um, but no, I mean, a uh, uh, hundred episodes ago, we were sitting here kind of, and over the course of the first, I don't know, 20, 30, 40, we were just kind of pushing each other to do it. Like, yeah, you text me. It, and I'm like, oh, God damn it. I'm comfortable. I don't want to go and whatever. But now we sort of, we and, and vice versa, right? Like it would, yeah. we would, we would push it. But now we're being pushed out, pushed on by outside forces, which is super encouraging. It's, so we, we you're, are very you're, grateful. You're, you're my Ferris and you're my Cameron and I'm your Ferris and I'm your Cameron. He'll <laughs> That's keep right. Calling me. That's right. He'll keep calling me. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. <laughs> and then it comes on and it, and it comes out. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. But we, but enough, enough loving 
and and nice yeah. things we've about to, each other. We have to and, talk and about the. Uh, we've got to we've got to talk about the real deal. And as much as both you and I have come to loathe this man, the guy fucking delivers, man. Cristiano yeah. in Manchester, coming home. Uh, the flaws in Manchester United made this game a lot better. <laughs> in that every time. Um, Every time Newcastle went forward, it was like, um, do you, you're you going to let them just run across the field? Because uh, <laughs> Matic would just be like, oh, look, it's Alan St. Maxima. There he goes. And uh, it was Boy, level at fast. halftime yeah, it, in the second half. And then just, you know, Cristiano scored a couple goals on some dodgy dodgy goalkeeping. But it didn't matter. The energy was there. I mean, it's 80,000 people at Old Trafford. As much as I don't want to love it, it was a moment. It's an incredible moment thing and i've thought a lot about i mean and it was easy manchester united scored goals that you'd expect him to score cristiano scored goals that only he would score he was anticipating the shot by by greenwood he put the 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 tap in in um united still looked a little shaky on the break and i think had colin wilson been there they might have been in trouble a little bit might have been a more of a a a 4-2 instead of a 4-1 because the goal that that newcastle scored was a nice goal uh, by Banquinho on the break from Almiron. They were just running at full speed. And yeah. as much as I love Cristiano, I really love Alan St. Maxima. Like that dude <laughs> Yeah, you do. You do. You just talk like, about him during the he's game. He's so fun. Like I wish Spurs had him, right? Like he would be like pissing everyone off, going like, Well, yes, stop with the fucking step overs and the spinning. Oh, around. you mean like uh we had him. His name was Eric Lamella. No, no, no. Like, he's better than already. Lamella. I'm sorry. No, he's but better he's than Lamella, but we had the he... step overs. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I love Alan St. Maxima. He's kind of like, a, well, well, he's kind of sort of a, a Zaha-esque who you can hate later on. Uh, we'll, uh, we, we'll get we, into that. As we go Trust through the me. show. So, I, I mean, have I think plenty to say about that. The thing that I think about with Cristiano is at this point, he is, I don't have a better way to say, he's bigger than the league, right? I mean, the yeah. Premier League is a big league, but at this point, he brings a light and a shine onto the league and it's a force multiplier. Like Manchester United is the biggest club in the world. That's not that's not a lie. And he's arrived and just elevated everything. Like that's going to lead with PTI. It's going to lead yeah. on here. It's it's football and having Cristiano at United. If you're a Premier League fan, frankly, it's good. It, it puts them back in the driver's seat. It's good for yeah. the league. And you know, I I do. I'm now like. Watching City sort of take 30 shots and not put any of them in, I'm like, it would have been nice to have a striker. <laughs> well, all right, look, the way, you, the way you characterize that with Ronaldo, right, you have to have the context of, yeah, they are the biggest club in the world, but they haven't been playing like it since Sir Alex left, right? So 10 years. They, it's going to be 10 years. Yeah. And so they are – They've been caught and passed, not just domestically. In every but, way, from but, a football uh, perspective, yeah. Right. And, and, I mean, Bayern Munich, Real Madrid, even Barcelona's had, what, numerous Champions Leagues in the last 10 years, even though they're in shambles right now. But actually, it's almost as if Barcelona's falling apart was a bigger story than Manchester United until Cristiano Ronaldo shows up, right? And so, um, you know, you've got in our notes that he's like Jeter and Reggie Jackson. I'll add one more. He's Mickey Mantle, you know. Yeah, he's um, big, big, big. He, he's everything. <laughs> and yeah. like you said, it's he's got the he's got all of the all of the the talent you'll ever want anyone, but also the intangibles. It was the following the shot from Greenwood. Not a lot of strikers are doing that at that that point, right? So and then the um, run, like he's still really fucking fast. Like on the yeah, break, of course he is. the uh, the Shaw goal where the goalkeeper again, mm-hmm. he's fucking flying. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, yeah. he, he reached twenty miles an hour. Like they had yeah. it on match of the day. I of course I watch. I consumed it all this week. So yeah, I was really able to watch everything. But it was pretty, like, it was really one of those, you know, it's goosebump stuff. It's like, all mm-hmm. right, I'll just separate myself from, and maybe, you know, this is where as Americans, we can step back and sort of appreciate it without the sort of loaded stuff. Like it would be like, you know, we wouldn't be able to do it if it was a Red Sox, but because we're sort of standing back, we can go, okay, like I hate Michael Jordan. I'll always hate him. I'll hate him forever as a Knicks fan. I don't care what he does. People might mm-hmm. love him. He can die in a fire. Like, that's fine. But I do acknowledge that 
Ronaldo is he they're at he and Messi are at they're at that Jeter le- they're sorry of they're course. at that, that MJ level where it's like they yeah. deliver they it's like they show yeah. up and it happens and now it's multiplied out it, it it is like that i think that is really the the, the, the difference though yeah, that i would say with that that context and that comparison is that you're comparing something to like that has happened in the last 20 30 years or something i would use a slightly different and not from a clout perspective these are not the same thing but mm-hmm. what shohei otani is doing this year in baseball right like which like nobody's done in 100 years where you're sitting there and i'm not saying from a like i said from he's not a name brand like a michael jordan you sit there and you go, holy shit. He just hit a hundred mile an hour fastball, 450 feet, and then, and then struck one. a guy out yeah. with a hundred mile an hour fastball. So yeah. it, it's just, it's fit, like you said, 20 miles an hour at 36 years old. He's just a physical freak of nature. And, and you're in awe of him while you're watching him. It, frankly, take the name off of his back for a second. You're just like, how did anybody just do that? So it's, it's interesting to the game itself though. You, you touched on it a bit. Um, it reminded me a lot, and I, I don't remember if Leeds was ended up a four-one game as well. But there was a moment and a few where United were shaky, and and like Same you said, problems. if Callum Wilson was on the field, anything. this could have been United are still have problems. Yeah, like they and, don't and have and a... we, we said that this would not change United molecularly, right? Like this is not this makes them better. It doesn't make them a runaway because Cristiano Ronaldo does not play central defensive midfield. But at the same time they are who we thought they are right um it's they're going to be it's really, they're going to be really more good. highlight reel they're going to be more yeah. more exciting i mean I, listen first of all they already had bruno doing incredibly fun stuff they already had pogba when he's yeah. you know in the mood he's incredible but now you've got the biggest headliner of them all right so the so most yeah talented team in the league the thing that's going to get them to lose yeah. is ole they could still win the league i don't I'm not sure. saying that they couldn't sure. still win the league there have been managers who are not great managers who've won leagues. I just think that he's not of the class of the rest of them. Like, you think Rafa's not going to take points off that team? You bet your fucking ass he is. Right. <laughs> yeah, and, and you know what I mean. Like, they're going to find a way. You think Liverpool's not going to beat them? Liverpool will beat them for sure. It's, <laughs> the way I see them is like it's the circus is coming to town, and sometimes the elephants have to shit. Right. Like yeah. that's really where it's going to go. Yeah, um, and, and listen, no. Cristiano didn't win with Juve. Juve was really, really, really good. They didn't win shit. Yeah, I'm just saying. No, I it, mean he's not perfect. So, uh, as but much what as he does make, is he makes Manchester United pretty close to must-watch television every week, which I'm sure they'll be on Peacock. Those greedy pricks now um, from NBC. But yeah, uh, yeah it's it's they were fun to watch from a neutral perspective. Now they're appointment television. So. Yeah, and we didn't have that many fun games this week. No, we didn't. Uh, that was the uh, only I, one. I, yeah, I mean, I'll, 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 I'll go Unless through you're an City's. Fan. I'll go. I'll go through City's game. You know, we have a new Silva. Uh, we lost. Uh, we lost El Mago David Silva, but Bernardo Silva, who wanted to leave, was incredible. His connection with Grealish was incredible. He scored the only goal of the game. Uh, City Cruz. City are who we think they are. Uh, it was a very City game, but. Again, I think one of the problems that I have with City is when they win, they're supposed to win. And when they lose, oh, something's wrong. So City are winning without De Bruyne, without Foden. Uh, they're just cruising. Good runs all over the place. A lot of There were some defensive moments. I think Ederson got kicked in the face by uh, by Kalecchi and Nacho, took a, took a shot. Uh, but, you know, City had like 30 Bill shots. Bill Clydesdale in the face, huh? Yeah, yeah. He, he really, I think, you know, City are still creating, but still a little... A little profligate, a little bit of that same city prom. I don't have a striker. What am I supposed to do? So expected goals is 2.8 to 0.8, but still scary moments in the game for City in that, you know, they they still don't have a striker. Sometimes you see them go down the wing and no one's in the box and it's still that problem. But, you know, they have a, they have the they they definitely have the best collection of midfielders in the world. <laughs> Well, sure. <laughs> for certain. Can I ask? Uh, and th- why? Uh, why didn't Phil Foden play? He was healthy. He was on the bench. Is it just another just getting him up to speed sort of thing? He'll be he'll be in there next week. Do you think he? Or, I mean, he'll probably feature in Champions League this week. I think um, you know Pep. Where, Pep Roulette you know, we'll is uh, slowed down. Pep literally played this same lineup for three games for the first time ever in yeah. the city. Okay, sure. So it's been predictable, which is weird. But I think it's been predictable because 
you know, the, the Champions League, the players they have, you know, there's just a lot of great players yeah. that aren't going to get to play all the time. It's just, but that's this the is, nature of City. You, you hit on it. This is the first, this is the last game, I should say, probably of the season that was predictable because now you go into two games a week for effectively the next six months. So mm-hmm. you're going to get rotation. You're going to get players who are hot, who are cold. Effectively, Phil Foden's rise last year started in Europe. And then he started to get more time in the in the Premier League, I should say. City, um, listen, so, Pep trusts so him. We'll He'll be there. It's going to be yeah. this. There's going to be 15 players, 15 to 30 players. Sorry, 15 to 20 players who play 30 games each. That's just City have a 80 right. game schedule. So I'm not no, worried. No, no, I know that. Guys will come that. and go. John Stones hasn't played yet. There's no reason he hasn't played, even though he and Diaz were the best pairing. Laporte's been good. Uh, yeah. Speaking of midfields, yours. Spurs 3-0 to uh, Crystal Palace. So, Not a good midfield on your yeah. <laughs> One All of right. the worst midfields. It was just like, you're a midfielder. You can play. Okay. So we that. are in the 100th episode of the show, and this is where we're going to be very typical. I'm angry about Tottenham. Um, this has been basically a theme. If you listened <laughs> from the beginning, there was a little blip where I was like, this might be fun, which happened already this year. Um, You've gone through Mourinho already. But I sat there and I saw the lineup and I saw Harry Winks. Now, now let's go ahead and go back up one more step. No Hyunmin Sun, no Steven Bergvine, both injured during the international break. We obviously, we chronicled the, the trials and tribulations of the Argentinians and Davidson Sanchez. So it's a makeshift back, you know, not even back four. It's a makeshift 11. Ten minutes into the game, Hugo Lloris gives Eric Dyer a suicide pass. And so he gets hurt. And now we've got one of our subs in Joe Rodon's coming in, who actually I thought played quite well. He was really good. Um, he was really good. Um, he was really good. But the problem I had with the lineup when I saw it is Harry Winks is in the midfield with Hoy Beer and with Deli Ali. I'm sorry, Deli Ali was up front, but like well, he was, he was bad. He was Probably. non-existent. Yeah. But the problem really is, bad. is that I saw the lineup and I went, the front three is going to be on an island all fucking day. There's not going to be anybody to get them the ball because Harry Winks is supposed to be that guy. And what you would have gotten. If you had Delhi play deeper where he has the first three games and been that bridge and you bring in new boy Brian Heal to be on the left wing, who's looked great, scored for Spain in the international break. I think the Spain U23s, but nonetheless, um, that was the expected. That was what I and I on the yep. 99th episode. I said, you'll see Heal on the left. And he you didn't. Show, yeah. And the first the first half was. Tottenham had 0.00 expected goals. They, sh- ended shot, with, uh, like, they ended with 0.1. Oh, I saw 0.09. So, yeah. Um, oh, okay. But, yeah, I mean, the first half was as bad as some of the worst Mourinho football as that I had to live through. And you go back and you go, okay, well, the game against City was great. But they played against City, and City were pretty solid. They were more unlucky than anything. And then you go, okay, well, it was Wolves. Wolves got battered by wolves. Yeah. Wolves <laughs> battered them, and by the grace of Adama Traore sucking at sports, that game was was three points and not one at the best. And then Watford, you really should have taken it to Watford. Granted, there were some good saves late on. It probably could have been two, maybe three, nothing, but it only ended up one with a shit goal on a set piece that basically went in by accident. Mm-hmm. So you went into the international break, sort of on a pretty you got flimsy, points. yeah, and a flimsy you got three. points, but on a flimsy three win. Three game win streak. Couple that with a really rough international break, as I already mentioned. You come back, you don't have the depth to be able to 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 really fire on all cylinders. But it's Palace, and I did say that Selhurst Park is a tough place for them to play, and I and I didn't like them going into it. Yeah, I, 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 but there I was watched, no intent, no interest. Yeah, I watched, I watched the whole game. Yo, Palace were fucking awesome. <laughs> Didn't I say they play they were Spurs so, well? So good, so they so always good. play Spurs Zaha well. At home. Was so good, but to be fair, they were the they were at Spurs, but it's the Davis handball that really fucking kills. Well, kills it was Spurs. the red card. It well, was the sorry, sorry, the red card. But there was some good shit that the 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 the, the Jaffet Tanganga uh, gets a pushes. By the way, really, I liked his spirit. Honestly, well, 10 seconds earlier than that, what happens yeah. is that Lucas goes down 50 yards away and they don't kick the ball out. They go flying down the wing 
And Tanganga is like, how fucking dare you? Takes Zaha and throws him like a rag doll, which I got to you, tell you. But, but you've got to be able to play. You, I, it was cool. I liked it as well. But you've got to accept that that can happen. And you have to be within yourself. Fine. Like, you have If the ref doesn't blow, the ref doesn't blow. You still have to fine. defend. You can yell after, right? That's fine. There's other ways to do it. I but, think it's because he was caught flat-footed and Zaha was going to beat him. But nonetheless. Well, well Zaha's going to beat anybody. But nonetheless. <laughs> You're on a yellow card now. I get it. You got in his he got in his face. And Zaha did grab him by the throat. There's pictures of that. So how Zaha didn't get sent off right there is ridiculous. Well, he could have got sent off too. He fucking shoved him in the face and then headbutt. You know what? I mean, they either of them could have. Take them both. That's a win I would take. But <laughs> for sure. <laughs> it's like the coincidental uh yeah, minor. They got in the hockey. two yellows. Fine. It it goes. But on. that's the thing but is Zaha that Jeff, was, you gotta stay Zaha on your feet. Was, yeah, Zaha was great. Um, it wasn't a really bad challenge, but it was a yellow. I mean, it just was, especially after he lost the ball. And then, um, my guy, Odson Edward comes on and boom, boom, two goals. Oh, I did. <laughs> really I left. Ball. I left after oh, the second goal. Zaha and Benteke. Well, Ed, uh, Osan Edward, who we talked about this episode before, scored the fastest goal in a new appearance ever in 26 seconds. His mm -hmm. first touch, boom, boom. Loris uh, maybe dodgy, but I think at that point uh, Spurs, it was in traffic. I can't. Yeah, I can't Spurs, Spurs kind of ran out of gas, uh, really. And then my other guy, Michael Oessi, comes on, also helps uh, helps things move along. And Connor Gallagher sets up the last goal. First by of Edward all, let's as well. go back. So like all my all the hits, all my guys kind of so kind of got involved. So I was happy about the that. The theme but of this Spurs game, were, Spurs were back. We'll talk about our best bets or not so much in a second, but all I kept thinking was, man, I wish I had a Colin Gallagher shots, not shots on goal because he was feeling it. He got the ball within 30 yards and he was like, I'm going. You could tell that it was a Chelsea youth player playing against a team he was born and bred to hate. <laughs> and he was like, I'm going to beat these motherfuckers. And honestly, yeah, he, was, he was phenomenal. He was good at, was good at, at uh, West Brom last year. He, but there, he and, there was, there was some flavor. Both. He's there was some something. flavor to it. He was standing over free kicks, kind of like licking his lips a little bit. Like he yeah, was, yeah, he had, he was feeling it. And I, it was, it was yet another example of where Spurs went wrong, wrong in the transfer market. I'm not saying they should have bought Connor Gallagher. What I'm saying is we had nothing in the midfield to be the bridge between, you know, basically the midfield three isn't, and the front three. Isn't Nuno supposed to be like a man manager? Like they spent all this time worrying about Harry Kane, they should have been spending time trying to get Tank, uh, your guy uh, back on side. Like, who's your midfielder? Well, that look, Tangy and Dombele. Dombele. The problem, the problem is that does he just want to leave? He he got pissed because we sold the two his two best friends who suck, Sissoko and Aurier, or we got yeah, rid of uh, one. They of them, got rid of all the French the guys. I got you. Yeah, and he's just so moody. He's one of these new age players that's the most talented player in the room. When he wants to be, but yeah. that's the key phrase. He only wants to be about ten percent of the time. Yeah, it's incredible. Yeah. He is. I've seen him completely dominate games for the first forty-five yeah. minutes in, and coming right out nothing, after halftime. Mourinho does in in all or nothing. Mourinho does identify Sissoko as a leader, as a guy. Yeah, who who connects the French players together. Of course, and because and, and that was connected. and he was and he was right to think that he was not his leadership, shall we say, was not worth what we were paying him per week on wages <laughs> alone. But that's why we sold him for two million just to get his wage packet off the books. But yeah. to, you, I mean, he did. He brought Indomably along for a while there because even in the early quarantine parts, like Mourinho was, uh, there have been multiple sit down conversations with Tangi and Dombley, Your record signing. And again, on talent alone, the, t the the signing is justified. But this kid just sits there and and just pouts. Are you wow. fucking kidding me? And and so what you're telling me, I mean, and I hope that this is the tone that Paratici and Levy had with him in their latest sit down with him. But <laughs> the, the effectively, we're not going to sell you because we know you are so much more valuable than we would get for you right now. We would sell you for twenty million to Barcelona, let's say, or to somebody in, in, in the German league or the, or actually realistically in the French league, right? He would go back mm -hmm. to France mm -hmm. for 20 million and you would light it up for them. Mm -hmm. And that would, buy, uh, that would, that would haunt us. Yeah. So a, you're a distressed asset. We're not going to sell you. We're not going to sell low on you, but B, if you do that somewhere else, like you've, you've, you've basically flamed out in your first big stage 
It happens. If you do that again, your career is fucking over, kid. So I yeah. hope that they were like they scared him into being yeah. like, hey, listen, bud. If we if you just piss off, then we'll at this point it's already a distressed asset. We don't care. We'll lose another five yeah. million, ten million on yeah. the price, and you'll go somewhere else, and we won't care at that point. But yeah. you're not. You think they're going to sign you for the wages you're on now? No yeah. chance. Are Are you concerned? Like I know narrative shifts really fast, and we talked about the sort of difficult results, but you were getting results. Are you worried now for a Spurs sort of decline without Sun, without Bergwine, where Kane no, is on his own? it's happening. I'm not concerned Dale, about it. No, but I'm saying, like, are you now <laughs> – are you afraid of Arsenal, for instance, right? Arsenal got their first win. They put on 32 shots on Norwich. Is it because of Norwich? Maybe. I lost my bet on them. Uh, you, you know, did. I don't think I don't think Norwich even created anything. Uh, Ramsdale now takes over for Leno. He only had to make – one save, uh, but 32 shots. That's the most no. shots that Arsenal have taken on an opponent since 2017. So that is a big thing. And and Arsenal are getting their players back, and this is the game we expected. Now the next one is Burnley, right? We were talking about, okay, get your wins. They needed 10 out of the next. Yeah. They needed 10 points from the next five. F- 15, right? So that's right? 15 points. Well, hold on. You asked, me, you asked me if I'm worried about Spurs. The answer is no, because I already see it coming. Um, <laughs> uh, we're, we're starting the Europa Conference League. I honestly don't know who, like, what quality of team is going to play in that. I don't want a good quality of team, obviously. We've, we drew Wolves in the Carabao Cup. So the next oh, you could lose that. three Easy. weeks, Ren, Chelsea, Wolves back at the Molyneux, Arsenal away, another Conference League game at home, thankfully, and then Aston Villa. Right before the Another October uh, international break, right, and so I we're not going to have the Argentinian group or end Davinson Sanchez before the Chelsea match, okay. so that's that's going to get ugly. That's going to suck. Do you um, want Chris Wilder as your coach? <laughs> no, I'm I'm not I'm not going to go full Nuno out. But like, are you ready he, he for had some, Graham Potter? Jesus, no, I. I this one felt more predictable uh-huh. when I, like I said, when I saw the lineup, I went, "This doesn't." Hey, listen, I know I you're, draw, you're down, man, forty. So that I thought that would be a good bet to be honest. And until the until the handball, it was. I mean, until the red card, it was. Yeah. Um, it looked like. But a I, you're talking about okay, Chelsea, Arsenal, Villa, the next three games, and and That's realistically coming off, you could, you could lose them. You easy. could lose all three. You could lose easy. all three of those. Yeah, it'll be crisis mode. For your it club. would be, but it it would be only in the fucking tabloids because <laughs> going to lose to Chelsea. No, you, you uh, well, should someone has beat to Arsenal. fucking beat them. That's not going to be us. It's sh- <laughs> you should beat Arsenal because Arsenal are shit, and I don't want to hear about how they beat Norwich. Like, great guys, if you didn't beat Norwich, they were going to light the stadium on fire. Um, but <laughs> yeah, if they just, Villa, they, yeah, Villa, 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 Villa should worry and, you because they are even though they're not really firing. They really took it to Chelsea and probably should have beat them. They yeah. actually beat them in XG but lost 3-0. Mm-hmm. That just goes to show how good Chelsea right now. They played And bad. a little bit how flawed XG is. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, Ollie um, Watkins missed like like open shots. Like just, yeah. and you knew you knew they were in trouble once that happened. Oh, who had here's the a good assist? Pe- here's a good piece of one. news. They're doing an investigation into sectarian slurs against uh mcginn so we've got some irish protestant stuff a little old school interesting little, uh, Love little, that. Uh, little old firm darby so apparently someone was yelling i don't know calling him a proddy i don't even know what the fuck that's like. <laughs> that's like, like we talk about racism and that's fine kick out racism how do you know who's the catholic and who isn't this has always been my thing <laughs> with the fucking irish and the scots like what is the fucking sign? He's wearing a fucking cross, or does he live over there? Do they walk around with fucking crosses all the time? Like, who knows who's an Irishman? They all Irish. <laughs> what are you talking about? Where is this sectarian flag? Or like, or in the or in Bosnia and Herzegovina? How do you know who's a Muslim and who isn't? You just know. You're like, <laughs> are you? And you just kill them? Oh, don't wear right. that funny fucking hat. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what's your name? Mohammed. Bing pow. Oh, what's your name? Patrick. Bing pow. Like this. Uh, my name is John. Okay. John 
Ooh, Not John could go either way. Welcome, yeah, John the John. Episcopalian, okay? John yeah, McGinn, right, right. like, what the hell? John the Baptist, anyway. yeah. <laughs> no, not the uh, Baptist. No, 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 no. No Baptist. No, no. Just don't not put the Jesus Baptist. on the cross, right? Right? I think that's um, the big thing. The Protestants don't actually put Jesus on I the don't. I, I couldn't tell you. They don't teach you the differences in Catholic school because they don't want to give you the idea of like, hey, they might have a better idea over there. I'm like, what about know. the Lutherans? They're like, no, yeah, fuck yeah. the Lutherans. No, I'm like, no, why? No, yeah, I don't. Like, I don't even is... know where this stuff comes from. But uh, like, you know, sectarian violence. The FA is going to check that one out. <laughs> they're going to check our show out. No, but yeah, I think yeah. I think they asked the time. I was like, oh, so one guy had a problem with a bunch of the stuff that the church was doing, sort of illegally and and kind of you know really pretty shady <laughs> shit. So he's he made a list of all the things that he doesn't like that they're doing, and he nailed it to the front of the church. I went. That's how I basically. The other day, I was like, that's how I dealt with the office manager in my apartment yeah, it complex. Was, uh, like, it, was, he, it was basically a, uh, a tweet that he put on the wall. Right. Yeah. He basically he yeah, yeah. He invented Twitter. So yeah. I was like, well, that yeah, guy yeah. that guy seems like he had a good head on his shoulders. Like, no Lutherans. Detention. I'm like, all right. Sorry. My bad. <laughs> he, just, he just wanted the church to be better. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, the, it was the princes who were like, oh, we're getting out of the church? Gonna take that land back. Yeah. Let's go. We're out. Bye. Peace. <laughs> oh, no. They're like sizing up land, sizing up churches. Be like, yeah, uh, we're just gonna take that. Okay, you come get it. Fuck off. We're out. Bye. <laughs> anyway, that's my that's my anyway. uh, that's my description of the Reformation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Back to Chelsea uh, Villa. Oh god. Mateo Kovacic had a phenomenal game. The the He's, pass for the first yeah, goal. I know. But that but that's all they did. They didn't really do anything. Oh, no, I know. And I hate that guy and all, but that was a fucking that was a great pass. That was yeah. a, like a, that looked like De Bruyne was on the end of it, right? Like yeah, I, I, that I was think a he, really, he really might good be pass. Uh, eligible for sectarian violence against. <laughs> he, he's on that. He's on that itch side of things. So I don't know. Now he's I one do, of the bad I, guys in that shitty Owen Wilson movie. Was it behind yeah. enemy lines? Yeah. Yeah, I do know one thing, and I do know that we've got to talk about our friend Joe, who uh, has been helping you out with your wedding. Me considering saving money for Aveline's uh, life because I don't know what's going to happen to her. She's a little weird. Uh, so uh, at Attitude of Gratitude, Joe will help you save money on your bills, consolidate your bills, make sure that you're not spending money you don't need, like buying money for spending money on Peacock when they only show three games that you don't want to see. So maybe you could just do some illegal streaming, uh, but Joe won't suggest you do that. <laughs> that uh, wasn't like, Joe's idea. <laughs> no, that's not Joe's idea, but he'll tell you, hey, maybe you should get rid of those things. So uh, we make sure that uh, we, we give a shout out to our friend uh, Joe at Attitude of Gratitude uh, Consulting. There's his wonderful, wonderful website and his baby. Uh, I'm sure, I don't know how old this is, but that baby might be a little bit bigger now. But that's okay. He's uh, he's <laughs> he has already paid for that baby's college. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you can schedule um, a call and call him anytime. So attitude of gratitude consulting at uh dub dub attitude of gratitude consulting dot com. And we get back to another young person who is deathly injured after playing against Liverpool, uh playing against Leeds, uh Harvey Elliott. 18-year-old season over, over, over after a Strauch tackle that uh, was pretty gnarly. He bent his – it didn't look bad in the moment, but after the fact, you yeah. could see – Yeah, he tried to get up, and it was like, yep. Yeah, yeah. And 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 um, it was a fun game. It was very Leedsy. so up and down, mm -hmm. back and forth at Ellen Road's, even though it's at Ellen Road, and I was like, are they playing at Anfield? I was like, oh, no. Ellen Road is like Anfield. <laughs> so just, <laughs> just another one of the great grounds in football. So – uh, if you watch on TV, you know, you had Palace in the morning, you had Ellen Road. Uh, these are like old school grounds, fans on top of each other, the way Tottenham used to be and the mm -hmm. way I think Loftus Road in for QPR is and the way Main Road used to be. I have a whole rant about your old stadium really hurting you. I think my cities and, and Emirates is pretty bad for, for, uh, for both Arsenal and City. But anyway... Uh, yeah, Harvey Elliott's legs gone. It, it's he's gonna miss the whole season. There's no way it's like totally bent sideways and backwards. And this is one of the sort of downsides of we've really been enjoying these attacking, letting people tackle kind of free flowing football. You had the t the Tanganga yeah. red card is really a result of not calling things, and then Elliott's is 
you know, a few tackles that look like you can do it, you start to give yourself a half an extra second of, you know what, fuck it, you know, and all of a sudden the kid's leg is gone and his career, I don't know if it's in jeopardy, but he's going to lose two years. I think about Hudson Adoy yeah. blowing out his Achilles, never really kicked on. He's kind of still stuck in second gear over at Chelsea, probably needs a move. But Elliot was great. He and Armstrong at Blackburn had been doing awesome stuff. Blackburn, we uh, Armstrong, we've seen at Southampton. He didn't score this week a nil nil West Ham. One of your bets that failed. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's sad. And and Liverpool are looking Liverpooly. They are good still. They are, but again, this is where the meat of the schedule starts to pick up, right? Like mm-hmm. the training wheels are off now. You're going into Europe, you're and they're they're playing uh, AC Milan tomorrow or Wednesday. I can't remember, yeah. um, but they don't have a walk walk through group, um, and what they don't have is reinforcements. So with the Harvey Elliott injury, effectively, he is the reinforcement, right? So um, mm-hmm. we talked about you know in their in their the the, the transfer Wednesday, review they play Wednesday conversation. Sure, Apple. fine. But like in, in the transfer window review episode we talked about, we gave them a D. And it's not because the players that they have aren't aren't great. They don't have they're gonna run out of racetrack really soon, especially up top. Tiago is still he's looking better. He's looking to like he he's was forming really, really good yesterday. Yeah, and he has that in his bag, and that's why they spent 35 million or whatever it was on him two years mm-hmm. ago. But you need him now. You, it's not. It's not a luxury signing. It's not like a, oh, we're going to ease him. This is your time now because Harvey Elliott was put pressing for one of those midfield spots, and he now he was gone. in that midfield spot. Now That's you've got I mean. to go back to Henderson, who's at this point brittle. Sure, can't really go five or six games. You're still relying on Milner, who's literally well, you've started gotten, playing is as old as Ronaldo. They're both the same season. Yeah, <laughs> they were. You've the got. League. You've got Robbo back, and he looks normal He's fine. again. Yeah. And the interesting thing to me is that once you reinstalled Van Dyke in the lineup, and everything. this is predictable, but everything sort of went back to normal. And normal is Trent Alexander Arnold being the best right back in England. So right. that he happened that, he again. He doesn't have to defend, right? He doesn't have right. to. He doesn't get exposed. It's so for me. It's two things. He doesn't get exposed, but he also has the peace of mind that he's like, I can fucking get exposed. Yeah, I'm fine. Like whatever. And so what that does is it that frees his creativity up, which I think was the main thing that was missing for him last year, where he's not afraid anymore. Right. Well, so other, he's just other, going. The other piece was every, everything got shifted 10 yards further back, right? Like they couldn't press high. So they weren't mm-hmm. winning the ball high up. So their defense, so they were going against set defenses, right? It yep. was like they weren't, they were a team that was relying on turnovers, like, or a pressing hockey team or, or something like that. And they were getting those turnovers. 15 years further back. And that was the difference because yeah, yeah, Salah can run, but he doesn't have to, he has to run 40 yards instead of 20 and it's less, more chaotic. So they're less chaotic. Those deeper crosses for Alexander Arnold are now within range and they'll just kick on. I'm still scared. I think they will. And I think actually one they're, they're thin, but one thing that should help them is frankly, the state of the world and the state of Africa, because I don't know if AFCON is going to happen. (laughs) <laughs> with, right yeah like yeah. there's a month that they'll lose their guys. between yeah. between covid and between fucking civil wars in countries and shit if mane and salah either the the countries don't participate the things happen they do not to go whatever it might be those players might yeah, not Kate, miss that Kate, amount of time Kate, Kate too Kate too is also and Kate too as well this country that just had a fucking coup uh, right so we I talked about I, that I don't know if he's gonna want to go uh yeah but they feel a sense of it, enormous sense of pride it's different oh no of course they do we it's, don't it's get the it same thing like, as the Argentinians oh, no, the Sala, no, no, no. Sala with Egypt is a little bit there's something fishy there he's not happy they, well he's a they're always pissy bitch. there's something there's something a little bit weird. But yes, there, there is a tremendous amount of pride. You're right. And like you said, we saw it with the Argentinians and the Brazilians to some extent. Oh, by the way, the Brazilians were allowed to play for um, Chelsea and Liverpool this weekend. I don't and know City. fucking why. We got, we got all City. our guys back too. Fucking bullshit. But so, <laughs> yes, there is a tremendous amount of pride. Yes, they are chomping at the bit to go, you know, get their club, uh, their their country into the World Cup. Although and win uh, Villa did not have Martinez and Buendia. Buendia, yeah. right? So the Argentinians, I don't know what the ruling was on that. That was it's weird. made up as they go along. 
But if yeah. they don't go anyway, if, if Mane and Keita and Salah don't go, that's how many points would you put on that for Liverpool? Six, ten? Six, six, right? Maybe they drop two, so, maybe they draw some. Right. So I mean it's a huge difference. And Jota's been good for them. Don't get me wrong, but like how when you he take... gets all those headers is beyond me. He's incredible yeah. at it. Yeah, he's great. And he's like Cristiano, except he's half the size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anyway, so we had any other games you want to touch on? I mean, I guess we should we can touch on our best bets, but that I was gonna say, yeah, let's segues, let's talk about that segues into Brentford and Brighton. Uh, this was my oh, yeah, I, we'll go. I'll uh, go no, first. no, no, yeah, you go first. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, so West Ham let me down more than my eventual children. Uh, they had control of the game and they just couldn't get a winner. Um, Antonio got sent off late, which I did not see that. I, I turned it off by it then. Two, but... It was two yellows. It was not. Yeah, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Villa was kind of a shot in the dark because I gave Laurent my third one uh, with Wolves, <laughs> which actually hit, by the way. We went one in five this week, uh, and Wolves was the only win. Uh, so whatever. I, I needed a third one, and I said, ah, fuck it. Villa, Villa by, uh, you know, less than two. Or I guess Chelsea by less than two. Um and uh, that didn't that didn't come to fruition. I felt really strongly though about Brighton Brentford, and it didn't happen. They told and, me good and I feel like, <laughs> but the funny thing is, is that I even Tony could have had two assists in the first half. I know, and and, and Blemo, was just just terrible. And <laughs> so, yeah. so I the feel XG, hard the done X, by the the XG gods have now reversed on Brighton. Brighton now has two wins. And on XG losses last year, they were the yeah. other way around. So yeah. it's all, it, it's all evening out in a wash, but uh, my Brighton, uh, my Brighton bet in the top half, it's looking good. I don't, I haven't placed it and I don't think I can place it anymore, but <laughs> I do think that uh, Brighton look, uh, you know, on the feet, they, they look good. Trossard with the 90th minute winner from Alex Mac, Alexis Mac Allister of Argentina, uh, a Scottish uh, yeah. Scottish Argentinian, like like the Coates, uh, formerly <laughs> Uruguayan, uh, for coats. Uh, that yeah. uh, so that's Nicholas a big zero and three for me. I go to three and six on the year. Um, as a fun little nugget as well, I got my shit kicked in in college football as well. Usually, I do decently in college football, 50 60 percent win percentage, maybe a little a little higher if I'm feeling good. Who Minnesota killed me. It was not good. It was not <laughs> the good. Golden so, Gophers. For our, yeah, for our you know European what? fans. They're playing Miami, Ohio. They're up 21 to three at halftime. They decided to not run the ball the entire third quarter. And they ended up winning the game, but not by nearly enough. So them's the breaks, right? And so I, here's, I will, here's I will, the runs. I will go through mine. Uh, I did not get to bet. I forgot to put them through, but I would have won on Wolves' money line. That would seem like a no-brainer. Uh, I took the long shot on Crystal Palace money line plus five twenty five. It seemed reasonable. Uh, uh, no, they only course, lost no. one nil. They could have won. And then Crystal Palace Tottenham draw was edging that way until, like we said, Tanganga got himself sent off. And I think uh, Spurs were playing for a draw from like the fifteenth minute. Yeah, uh, there was not from much the lineups. going forward. Uh, I wonder how, if Nuno is. Does Nuno know? I don't know. Uh, we're not sure. We may have to change our shirt to like a well. A does no an, know? I, I posted that shirt in a Tottenham Facebook group with a, a couple thousand folks in it, and uh, before the game, well. yeah, before no, the game, they're like a couple people, like, "Oh, this is kind of cool." And then I got absolutely barbecued after the game. So <laughs> I was like, I made the fucking decisions or some shit, you know? Yeah. So, so. in in these last five minutes, uh, we do. Have the Champions League coming again? So yeah. uh, when when we so I just want to sort of frame this. We are a Premier League uh, focused um, podcast. If you with Spurs and me with City, but we cover this Champions League from the English perspective, following our clubs. Now Spurs not in the Champions League uh, for the first second time in the last six or seven years, but City do play. We do play. Le City do play Leipzig. I'm afraid of Leipzig. I'm always afraid of weird German teams that. Uh, have Jesse Marsh as their coach because uh, I was afraid of them when he was the coach at Red Bull New York when I was a NYCFC fan. And then City have, like we said, Liverpool on Wednesday at home. So that's not as bad. And the genius uh, people at the UEFA, of course, putting PSG, Milan, Liverpool, City, and Ajax all at the same time. So <laughs> good job by you not staggering 
four of the biggest clubs. Well, I'm not well, even. Well, they always do that, Ajax, though, right? Like Milan, Liverpool are literally four of the royalties of football in history. Yes, they do it all the time. It's still stupid. I, like, you know, they're leaving okay. money on the table, right? You're right. We talk You're about right. this kind of stuff all the time, right? Like, would the NFL put all their fucking games on at the same time? No, they would not. <laughs> The only thing, the only thing that I think that they would, they should do is keep the groups running simultaneously. Okay, fine. All so right. if no, no, right, like if liver, I, and I'm not looking at the groups right now, but if if team A and B are playing, and team C and D in that group, they should not have prior knowledge of the other game. Those oh, should be I, simultaneous. I understand. What you're saying. I understand what Those you're should be simultaneous. They do, the they whole do way. have early games, right? They do have a. Yeah, well, it's because of the time differences. Right, That's right. Not, but, the, but they could put three time slots right instead they only put yeah yeah they realistically it's one time slot it's just whatever time slot that falls in that locality essentially no no right? no like, they they this is new they do have a early game so that normally they're at 8 p.m. european time but they yeah. do have an early starting sort of 5 p.m. game now there's a 9:45 a.m. west coast so united will get the solo slot uh, against red bull salzburg west sevilla you know shit. They're gonna put that game on early so that uh, United get the fucking ratings there and the, on Tuesday. And then uh, tomorrow, the big game is Barca versus Bayern. Although I don't think Barcelona are any are long are any long. They're no longer a super club. They're on equal footing with Sevilla. <laughs> this is a this is yeah this is a not in the face game for this is for a Barcelona. not in the face for Barcelona. Yeah, they're gonna yeah. get beat. Like yeah. they could get beat badly. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yeah, and and then uh, I'm curious. Let's see. Is there a way in that Barca doesn't make it out of this group? Hold on. Hold on. Sure. Hold on. Let's... Easy. They're not okay. good. Can Benfica beat Barcelona? Can Kiev tie them and take a point off of them for Benfica oh, to they, sneak they through? They got to. They. I mean, I don't. I, I don't know enough about what Benfica are up to. I don't so know a fucking problem. thing about them. What I do know is Kiev is not a nice place. In the winter. No. <laughs> okay. But they're not the good team out of that area, right? It's Shakhtar. That's the good one. It doesn't matter. You're playing general winter. Uh, <laughs> let's see. November oh. 2nd, Kiev, Barcelona at in Kiev. That's yeah. not going to be a pleasant afternoon for Barcelona. Well, first of all, there's a current occupation by the Russian uh, government of Crimea. I don't care what you say. It's not your fucking country, you scumbag fucking Russians. And That's right. Quid Put pro the quo. On. Quid whoa, pro whoa. quo. <laughs> Put the helmet back ask, on. <laughs> we did ask for fucking shit from uh we did ask for shit from you. Trump did ask for extra stuff, and that's okay. You should have given him Hunter Biden stuff because it would have been more interesting and the world would have lost his mind. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Ukraine is not weak. Uh it's been discussed on Seinfeld many times, but uh we're getting close to time, my friend. Is there anything yeah. else we want to discuss, talk about, set up for Thursday? We'll be going. We'll probably have to go through the results if anything interesting happens from the Champions League. Yeah, we can go through them quickly. We will do our previews and our best bets for Thursday. I got to start looking at these lines a little bit sooner. I am definitely gonna take. Um, I'm gonna definitely take Burnley to fucking kick the teeth out of Arsenal. <laughs> I'm just gonna keep betting <laughs> against Arsenal until they lose, just because I'm rooting for Schadenfreude. But Burnley are bad. They're looking very long in the tooth at this point. Yeah, so I'm I worried. guess. For the El Di- El Di- uh, El, El, El Ducherino. Yeah. Did you see um, Mourinho running down the sideline at Roma? No, I don't want to. <laughs> I hate him. My 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 beloved Salernitana got boat raced again. Um, <laughs> just fucking killed four 0 I think. Um, who, the mistake I made against Torino, not a good. Not by the way, there as I look at them now, their badges are extremely similar. Uh, so I was like, you know, we're, we're, we're Torino in disguise, but, uh, it's not going well for the fight in Salernos and, um, we may be back, uh, out of Serie A sooner rather than later. Oh, so I gotta I get have, over I do, there. Ha- I do have one thing that I want your reaction on. Okay. Um, the Crystal Palace fans chanting, are you Arsenal in disguise? <laughs> yeah, we deserved it. We deserved it. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I wish that the fucking announcers weren't so English and stuffy and would just like just for Americans. Tell us what they're fucking saying. They never do. Yeah. yeah We're yeah. always like, you're just a what? You're just a shit who? 
Oh, yeah. you're, you're, who the fuck are you? Like, what are they saying? Can you, yeah, uh, yeah. Arlo, can you talk about some fruity language, please? <laughs> yeah, that's how we always, we, our apologies for the fruity language you might be hearing. Oh, fucking fruity language. But this is ass. our, this is our 100th episode and uh, I'm really proud yeah. of us for getting here. Um, it reminds me of the South Park bit from their 100th episode where I'm a little bit country, you're a little bit rock and roll, uh-huh. but who cares? 100 episodes. So that's yeah, where war, war that's is over. Uh, we had our, 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 our we had our uh, our yearly 9/11 spat. Uh, we did. That always we did. happens. We yeah. I, literally every year we have this. I'm I'm a non-flag flyer, and you're a fan of the flag, uh, <laughs> but not a fan of the fag. So tip for tat. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what that means. Gay people, I love you. LB che- the alphabet people, we're all together. My I'm my fine. brother, we're my, fine. my brother Samuel, who be transitioned to Elena in France. I love you, no matter what your name is. That's actually a true story that happened. Uh, my dad's sperm is really weird. He's getting weirder kids as he gets older. Um, and that's how I'm going to end the show. <laughs> Let's get out of here. Yeah, that was the Squeaky Bum Time podcast for transgender people like my brother and sister, whatever he is, uh, with Mike Salerno and Laurent Cortines. We are the football wing of the Chop Sport ne- Sports Network. We record on Tuesdays and Fridays, so be sure to subscribe subscribe wherever you get your podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you're listening on Apple or Spotify or whatever, please rate and review the show. It makes a huge difference for the show. We love everyone. We're happy to have everyone. Thank you for listening to at least one of our 100 episodes. And uh, hopefully we don't get canceled. <laughs>